thank you. I uh, uh, I thank the organizers for putting together this very exciting workshop, uh, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. Okay, uh, except that I had to miss the, uh, the last week because of teaching responsibilities. Okay, so I'll I'll talk about this: how to detect topological edge states. Uh, well, how to detect the Z2 more specifically Z2 order by direct imaging of the edge states. Okay, so uh, let me start out acknowledging my students and collaborators, David Shea, Dong, Andrew, Matthew. They're, they're, the, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're the graduate students here who are really uh, carrying out the work on site. So, uh, and then uh, we, uh, we closely collaborate with Bob Kalfa's group and also other groups around the world on the material suspect. And uh, all my students apparently have some <laughs> interesting Fermi surface associated with their career. <laughs> and this is the bismuth selenide Fermi surface we just posted. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> right, okay. So uh, 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 I should also acknowledge uh, many helpful discussion with uh, Charlie Kane, Xu Cheng Zhang, Duncan Holden, and also I'm learning about this theta vacuum from Frank Kulczyk. He seems to be interested. He tells me that there's this dual between monopole and charge. Okay, so let me map this problem into the global framework of fundamental condensed matter physics. So I have taken the liberty to define what is fundamental condensed matter physics, quantum Hall effects, superconductivity, quantum magnetism, phase transitions. So the question that has emerged is that can we get Hall-like effect without magnetic field? Can we get non-abelian physics out of it? The superconductivity, can we get superconductivity without phonons or BCS? and magnetism, can we get fractionalization in higher dimension, <coughs> and can we get deconfined criticality? Okay, so we are here. So this is sort of the overview of what I do at Princeton. Uh, I'm focusing, I, I'm using a variety of techniques to address three of the problems I mentioned. One is this uh, uh, using angle and spin resolve photoemission spectroscopy, resonant X-ray scattering, and we started to do some neutron scattering, and uh, and we also do uh, quite a bit of spectrometer development at places around the world, including SLAC and LBL. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. I'll mention the basics of quantum Hall effect and topological invariance and report observation of topological insulators or metals in a variety of compounds, starting with bismuth antimony alloy. And then I'll show antimony has Z2 topological surface states. And uh, I'll mention a few others, although there is embargo from the journals. Uh, uh, and then I'll, I'll describe how we experimentally determine the Betty phase, which is critical for topological surface states. I mean, that's the critical signature to get new nautical one. And then I'll address how much, at this point, can we manipulate these topological surface states. Okay, so this is a brief. Uh, uh, this is our work published and posted on this topic. So as we all know that quantum, uh, quantum Hall effect phase is a band insulator, but it has topological properties in the sense that uh, uh, there can be con conduction through the boundary. And, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, the quantum numbers one can read off from a transport measurement. Okay, so let me remind you, the quantum number of the quantum Hall effect is a topological quantum number, and, uh, it's, and its property is that there is a close correspondence between bulk and edge through this Chern theorem. So uh, this finite n 
this finite n giving me this uh, uh, this topological protection. Okay. Oops. Did I do something wrong there? Okay, just a second. Okay, so uh, uh, so that's quantum Hall effect, which is the, the state is time, not time reversal invariant, it breaks time reversal symmetry. So the, I guess the first person who asked this question, can we get Hall-like effect without magnetic field, is Haldane, and he, uh, he solved this graphene lattice problem, and then he showed that if you have alternating field, but the net field is zero, you can have, uh, indeed have Hall conductivity plus minus one. And, uh, and the edge spectrum is something like this. We have chiral fermions. So, uh, so there is a, uh, so experimentally suppose somehow this, this uh, Haldane model is realized. How do one know that it's really, from experiments, how do one really know that it is Haldane model? So I propose two things. First of all, one can do a transport measurement and see that the Hull conductivity is plus minus one experimentally. But having Hull conductivity plus minus one does not prove that this, uh, it's, uh, it's Haldane model. One really has to look at the microscopic, that what the electrons are doing, this edge structure. So direct imaging of the edge structure is critical. So one has to combine Hall transport with this direct imaging because if, if, if the uh, edge structure is like that, this will necessarily imply one can predict that there will be conductivity like that. So edge bulk correspondence. So I guess the next important development is that can we get a time reversal invariant state? Uh, and this was shown by Kane, Milley, Bernevig, Zhang, and also numerically by other groups. And then uh, in 3D, there's a non-trivial generalization. Uh, it was realized shortly afterwards. So uh, this, this state can be the, uh, the analogy with spin orbit coupling and the uh, Hall physics as quantum Hall physics. The analogy between these two comes from the form of the spin orbit coupling, one can write it in a symmetric form and then can show that uh, uh, it might correspond to a linear combination of two quantum Hall systems up and down. However, in this case, uh, uh, the Hall coefficient for up and down can uh, cancels each other so that the overall conductance is zero. So that means the charm number is zero. There's no protection for the edge states, right? So uh, the non-trivial question here is that can there be a new protection law for the edge current? Is there a new topological state of matter? That's an equivalent question. And this one can ask in 2D and 3D. <coughs> and there are many different generalizations into 3D. Uh, the, in its simplest form, these invariants are uh, easily written down if the crystal has inversion symmetry. So one considers the parity of the block states and uh, this uh, at the time reversal invariant momenta. And then this index, if it is zero, then it's trivial. There's no protection for the edge current, edge, edge state. And if it is one, uh, it, in, uh, it's non-trivial. And in 3D, there are four invariants, so there are 16 states and all that. So I'll focus on the experimental part from now on, is that the topological quantum number of uh, quantum Hall effect can be measured by transport by looking at these steps, and that's straightforward. How do I microscopically identify the topological quantum numbers associated with the, this Z2 topological phases? How to experimentally measure, nail down the topological quantum numbers quantitatively and uniquely? Okay, 
The challenge is nothing is necessarily quantized, but there is a set of four topological numbers. How do I measure these numbers? So I argue that to nail down these topological numbers in variance, one has to do a spin sensitive momentum resolved measurement. And this is, this. I'll explain why. So uh, we have to image the Dirac fermions directly. No, that's not enough. We also have to look at their spin texture, whether there's a berry phase on, on the surface or not. Ideally, one could st step back and go down and ask this question, how, how about I just measure the parity of the bulk block stage, then I, I should be able to know what happens, right? But that's terribly difficult. But it turns out one can show uniquely that the parity of the bulk states, uh, it's uh, based on the theoretical formulation. It's actually uniquely identified by these two measurements, experimental measurements. So we do uh, photoelectric effect measurement photon in, electron out, there are conservation loss associated with the scattering process, energy momentum and spin. So we analyze energy momentum and spin. Spin detection is tricky. One might think that uh, uh, one should do, do a stern garlic experiment, but it, that's terribly inefficient. Uh, it turns out uh, a more efficient process is to use mod scattering that's in, 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 in itself is like extrinsic spin hull effect. Uh, so we're using extrinsic spin hull effect uh, to measure spin degrees of freedom here. So we have a beam, electron beam coming out of the CNT detector and, it's, uh, and then it's scattering from a, a gold nucleus. There is spin orbit coupling, LS. And then I can get this asymmetric uh, two asymmetric, two channels. So on the left detector, I count what I call up. Right detector, I count what I call down. So what are the candidate materials? Graphene spin orbit coupling is weak. We studied lead telluride system quite a bit, and there's no sign of surface state, although it has four Dirac fermions, so it's not surprising. So it's consistent that there's no surface state in lead telluride. Then uh, there is, Bob is always scared, scared about looking, working with mercury or any toxic material. So we never, arsenide too, yeah, his. So we never uh, had him make some of this stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, we were all working together on sodium cobalt tip, so we wanted to look at the conventional thermoelectric materials like bismuth telluride, bismuth antimonide. Bismuth telluride, the problem is that bismuth telluride has surface states, but it's, uh, its surface reconstructs and it also it interacts with the X-ray beam. It's time dependent, so it's not, it's ruled out. We looked at it about one and a half years back. Uh, and then, the only system that worked for us is this bismuth antimonide alloy. Okay, and uh, about uh, last summer and spring, we also looked at new, new materials because that, uh, based on the lessons learned from bismuth antimony, we, we figured out what are, what are other materials uh, to look at. We, I suggested a list of materials to Bob Kalfa, my colleague, to make for us and then we uh, go back and forth, uh, feedback both ways, how to improve the materials quality by looking at the RPS data. And then uh, we, found, we looked at this bismuth selenide, this two, three series, and there are four compounds in that series. Only bismuth selenide is clean. Antimony telluride is terrible because it has five surface states. It's even, it's dealing with this is even worse than bismuth uh, antimony alloy. Can you, can you deduce whether 